So we've got seven years of experience in doing this. We started off as a pilot program in 2009, uh, which got a fire grant from the Royal College. And since 2013, we've made it a program-wide plan of uh, residency education assessment. So how we radically change residency training, seven-year outcomes of CBME in our division. So the objectives of this talk are briefly to go over how we implemented a competency-based training program. And I think many other people, particularly the Compass by Design Initiative, has closely looked at how we've done things. I'll review the pitfalls and successes in our pilot project, there have been many, and then I'll have a brief word about future directs. Essentially, we're all going this way. So, how we did it, really, we broke it down into these five simple steps. Not really simple, simple on paper, but it took a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears to really make it work. So we start off with brainstorming sessions. Back in about 2007 and 8, this was all a new idea. There were a few uh, articles and literature about it, but Richard Resnick, who is the chair of uh, surgery at the University of Toronto, was a real surgical innovator, uh, decided to get this going in one of the training programs in Toronto and our division took uh, it forth. Uh, ben Allman was the chair, um, Bill Kramer was the program director and Peter Ferguson was also tasked with being the associate program director making this work. So we got world leading educators, thought uh, provocateurs and uh, people especially uh, talented in, phys in um, the education process of motor skills to sit down with our uh, leads in our training program to come up with a template. And essentially what we had to do is we had to revise the objectives of training that the Royal College sets forth through the Specialty Training Committee. Uh, really we questioned what was necessary at that day and age for orthopedics or a lot of the older things in the document weren't really relevant to our practice at that day and age or in this day and age. So it was a nice chance to refresh the objectives of training. Out of that, we developed specific curriculum maps, an overall program cu curriculum map, but also module or rotation specific curriculum maps, which really outline the process of teaching and the assessments and what the goalposts or milestones would be to determine competence. Out of that, we had to develop an appropriate feedback process, which was new to us, uh, evaluation plans and tools. And the real trick here was developing evaluation tools because nothing exists in literature at that time for orthopedic surgery, let alone the CAMEDs. Uh, rules, the intrinsic CAMEDS rules. So we worked intensely with our faculty and also as time with the postgrad office to develop what we think is the most modern um, tools that we can use, although they're not really sensitive or specific uh, but or um, reliable or valid. They're good in a sense, but they're not perfect there just yet. But with time, we hope they will be. And again, that's, that's a big topic on its own. And then last, we had to plan an implementation track, and it's taken time to get there, but uh, we're happy we did. So with regards to the curriculum, essentially we broke down our training into 21 specific phases. Um, the laser pointers there, we basically broke down our rotations into specific rotations with, re with regards to different phases. The basic uh, skills and knowledge related to orthopedic surgery, which are the first year or two in our residency training program, the intermediate phase, which had specific rotations, and then our senior uh, phase, which had the more complex uh, rotations. Um, what you can see here is that we not, did not just teach and assess the CAMEDS rules re related to the medical expert role, we also taught and assessed the intrinsic CAMEDS rules, which was something new to surgeons. So instead of teaching and assessing them in every module as we planned at the beginning, we realized it was much more functional to teach one or two intensively in each rotation so that horizontally and longitudinally through each phase or the whole phase of training, the trainees would have an equal distribution of teaching and assessment of these CAMEDS rules. Okay. So that's how the curriculum played out and how it pretty much plays out today. Uh, within e the overall curriculum map, there is a curriculum map for each module. There are several pages for each curriculum map, but with the help of postgrad office, particularly Sue GT, we got input on how to come up with a modern curriculum map. And essentially the, the categories are that what CAMEDS role you're looking at, what the overall learning objectives are, what the source documents are. So we provided our trains with all the source documents that they needed to know for each rotation specific competencies, learning, teaching strategies, and then the evaluation methods or tools that would be used to determine competence. Okay, so that would be a curriculum map, for example, in oncology. But again, we have several curriculum maps in, uh, throughout uh, each rotation. There were several pages long. As I mentioned, we wanted to develop assessment tools to determine competence. This is really an entrustable professional activity. This is an older slide evaluation procedure. But we, what we figured is that in surgery, you have to be able to take care of a condition that presents to the eMERGE or your elective uh, clinic. Uh, from pre-op to intra-op to post-op. And really, these are entrustable professional activities that, that, that we assess. This is for the complex trauma module, uh, fixing an ankle fracture. It's several pages long, but basically we break it down in different phases of care. This one, this slide covers the preoperative planning with graded aspects of levels of competence, which three would be competent, five would be expert, four proficient, and one dis uh, discompetent. So these are the tools that we've been used with time. They've been modified as time has gone on with the input of experts 
in assessment, and we think we have a good thing going. Uh, with regards to the evaluation plan for each rotation, again, we had to really step up the number of assessments to determine competence. And ideally, as you may hear in the recent Royal College speak, so to speak, from competence by design, the goal is to have multiple low stakes assessments that are done on every one rotation, so you just don't have that one penultimate assessment in Ottawa for the Royal College licensing exam. Uh, what we found in our training program, you had to be careful not to overload the faculty and the training with too many assessments, so we've got, a, I think, a good balance now. And, we, and the, there's debate as to whether we should use simple or complex assessment forms. We like to use a mix of simple assessment forms for potentially the intrinsic candidates' roles and more complex assessment forms that rate our abilities of our trainees to take care of surgical procedures. And obviously, these are all put together to complete the requirements of a trainee's learning portfolio. How will be done? Well, the amount of feedback that we've generated on our trainees has been uh, quite uh, spectacular different compared to our regular students. So if you compare, the, for example, the first four years of training in our competency-based curriculum, our trainees in the CBC in yellow have four to five times more assessments uh, than our regular stream residents in white with regards to all the different assessment tools. So that really gives us enhanced knowledge of where our trainees are right off the bat, which is so useful to get trainees on track if they have trouble at any phase of their career. What are the outcomes of our training program thus far? Well, let's break it down into three categories of residents, faculty and program. The residents, I think, have benefited the most out of this. Um, really, the residents know where they are at all the time with regards to not just the medical expert knowledge, but also the CAMAS rules. And as a consequence, the CBC was allowed by the Royal College to allow our residents to get to the training program in as many years as it took for them to become competent. About two-thirds of our regular our CBC residents at the beginning actually graduated the training program in four years, as opposed to the five-year standard in, in Canada. And this is the first time that residents in a surgical training program in North America actually got through in less than five years. They all went to Ottawa, they took the Royal College exam, they did, and they passed and they got into fellowships and are now in practice. So the residents really enjoyed it. It was an ability for the really competent residents uh, to get through quickly. For the residents that had difficulty, again, it's been a great ability for us to be, uh, get a sense of where they're at and we can help remediate them appropriately. How about the faculty? Well, the faculty have had a little bit of trouble. We had a lot of early adopters in this, but we also had some late adopters. So the real trick here was to get the information across to those uh, faculty that didn't come to all those meetings that we set up all the time. Here you got a pretty good turnout. So these are the kind of the early adopters in different specialties. But it's those late adopters that are hard to get to. So we've had to have dinner meetings at nice Italian restaurants downtown, buy nice bottles of Italian wine to get people to show up to talk about what's important. But really, you got to be creative on how to get to these people that are a little bit more resistant and say, I've been doing it for 30 years, I'm just fine. Lastly, the program where we benefit immensely, again, we've had multiple internal external reviews over the years to ensure that we are doing no harm, believe it or not, with these CBC residents. Indeed, we've shown that we haven't. I think we're the most uh, up-to-date competency-based training program in North America, if not the world, in terms of orthopedic surgery. So we're proud of that. And again, it's been not just, you know, the program directors over the years have done this, but great input from our faculty and our, and our residents that have gone through this process. And it's been a really iterative process. Uh, despite the benefits, you know, we've had challenges. And the main category here, let's break them down, resource intensive. This is a very costly endeavor financially, but also with regards to faculty time. We use, you, we use a lot of simulation in our training program. I got a paper published earlier this year, or last year, on the cost just of simulation. The cost of simulation has been 15 times greater in our competency-based stream than our historically. So where is the money coming, coming from? And also our faculty are spending at least three times more teaching and assessing our residents than they did before we implemented this. It's all for the benefit of the trainee, but again, as time goes on, faculty get burnt out and say, listen, I'm doing enough as it is. So where do the hours come from? Where do, where do the dollars come from? Scheduling was a problem early in our pilot because in the pilot CBC program that we started off with, residents were on modules for as long as it, for them to become competent. So some residents got through quickly, other ones took longer time. Now scheduling those people on rotations and call schedules a nightmare because if you thought somebody was going to pass on Friday and they didn't on assessment, you needed to keep them for an extra few weeks. That was a real problem that they had to switch from hospital A to B by the following Monday. We got over that and recognized that you can't have open-ended uh, training schedules. You need to have fixed time blocks uh, to make it work. So we have more of a hybrid system. All the teaching assessments are competency-based, but residents are on time blocks because that's how the rest of the healthcare system runs. And if trainees need remediation later on, obviously they'll be scheduled to get it uh, when they need it. Residents had to be flexible. Uh, they are now really partners in their own education. We give them the information. We let them work in our clinics and operating rooms, but it's up to them to become responsible for their education. They're responsible 
for getting the assessments done and making sure that their uh, portfolios are filled out. If they aren't, they can't uh, move on. And then lastly, it's been a new trading paradigm for faculty. Again, I think most people get it, but the trick here is really to make sure the faculty uh, understand the tools that they have to use. So we've had a lot of input from our faculty, the tools that they're using, and, and they're, they, they accept them. Those assessment forms, they say, that's practical, I'm happy to fill that out. But if you don't have an IT server that supports that, everything falls on its face. When we started off doing this, we had paper assessment forms. You can imagine what our success rate is, getting those paper assessment forms done. They always forgot in the office, oh, I'll do it next week. Right now we've got a system where we can have the information on a cell phone or an iPhone where the resident goes to the staff and says, assess me now. If you don't have the IT server that supports it, it doesn't work. So it's something to think about. And I think a postgrad here in Toronto has definitely thought about that, as has the um, ACGME. So what's the future? Well, as you know, we're all in this together. Uh, we will be working nationally with our uh, program directors and our specialty committee starting next year to implement this nationally in 2020. So it's exciting times. We've kind of had the first attempt at uh, competency-based education. Things will be modified for a national standard because what happens in Toronto doesn't equal what happens in the rest of the country. We really look forward to uh, making things even better and revising things as time has gone on. So summary, quick uh, overview of how we implemented a competency-based training program. We, I've gone over the pitfalls and successes in future directions.